You have changed a lot since I saw your faces or your company 20 years ago. When I was here, there were not nearly as many women. There were not nearly as many minorities. There were no blue jeans, and there were no snazzy handlebar mustaches. You know who you are. Hey, there's no acronyms with me. There's no statistics. There's no slides. I just want to talk to you for a few minutes, give or take, and share a few stories I think might be useful as you continue along your path. Great professionals, almost all successful people that we admire and try to learn from, bring to work, bring to teams, bring to clients the most authentic version of themselves possible. Because people like real. People like real. Authenticity, it's free and it's powerful. We also know as a bunch of scholars who study good men and women who go to work every day that you guys have taken managing impressions to a level that sometimes is way past useful and becomes absurd. You do it so much, so passionately, you show a very truncated small slice of yourself to others. The one slice you think is professional, polished, digestible, acceptable. That's good, but it's not good enough. I want to try and pressure you a little bit more. As I think about great leaders, as I think about authenticity, I think about a topic that makes many of you nervous, a topic many of you don't want me to address, many of you do not ever want to talk about with your family, your friends, or heaven's sakes, your boss. The topic is failure. Close your mouth. Very hard to do. Open your ears, open your eyes, and see the unique contributors around you for the unique things that they're adding to the effort that you're working on. Here's a weird thing. When people sense that you see in them the unique thing they're offering and that you genuinely value that, it's pretty shocking how much more interested they are in listening to what you have to say. If you want to maximize what you and your team can do, it's not about fixing the crazies. First, always first, it's about fixing you. It's unbelievable how we've changed the one rule concerning rewards that truly matters into something that I don't even recognize anymore. You got to connect the use of recognition and rewards with the production of excellence, not just meets standards, but excellence. That's a defining truth in every high performing team I have ever had the pleasure of observing. My youngest, his name is Parker, and about four years ago he started playing t ball. And to be perfectly frank, I learned after the first game he was not that good. I watched his team. His team was not that good. Ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the season, how many of those kids got trophies? Every one of them. And what did they learn? It's worse than nothing. I heard someone say nothing. It's worse than nothing. They learned, I breathe, therefore I'm awesome. We have institutionalized low standards, and we do it in even some of the biggest corporations that I've been involved in. I am not telling you you can't give people stuff. Of course, I am not saying that. I'm saying that if you do, you better be thoughtful and make sure they have legitimately earned it. When tough stuff happens, it's amazing how much you can learn if you're paying attention. What my dad taught me, I'm not going to share with you what we know about how you relate to your colleagues and how you run teams is very, very clear. If you will make the conscious choice to do what he did and frame everything, because anything can be framed positive or negative, if you'll take the positive route, on average, over time, empirical fact, your team will perform better. Oh, by the way, it's free. You're welcome. One of the best tools ever.